There's a reason for better and for worse is a part of the marriage vows. Marriage is a lifelong commitment that evolves as a couple grows and changes over the years. On today's case, Mr. Smith says the honeymoon stage in his marriage is over, and now he barely recognizes the woman that he vowed to spend the rest of his life with. Mr. Smith says his wife has turned into an unappreciative, combative shrew who wants to control his every move, and he's had enough. But it's not just Mr. Smith who has the problem. His wife, Ms. Okarma, says that her husband has turned into a manipulative gambler who can't be trusted to pay the bills and treats women off the street better than he treats her. Yet, she still wants to do what she can do to love and cherish Mr. Smith until death do them part. He wants a divorce, she wants to reconcile. Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Smith versus Okarma. Okay. Mr. Smith and Ms. Okarma. Mr. Smith, you are in court today because you say that your wife has turned into someone you no longer recognize. You say that your wife is aggressive, verbally abusive, and combative, and you've had enough. And you're here because you want a divorce. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. O'Karma, you're here today because you want to save your marriage. You say your husband is a gambler and he's financially irresponsible. You believe you don't need a divorce, you need marriage counseling so that you both can work through your issues. Yes, Your Honor. So, we're at a crossroads in a relationship that has over a decade invested in it. Uh, I would like to point out that Mr. Smith's sister is here as a witness today, and we will get to Ms. Cherie Smith a little bit later on as the court case progresses. Mr. Smith, talk to me. You've yes. been together for 10 years. Sir, why are we in court? Well, yes, Your Honor. I mean, just at this point, she's just controlling. I mean, she's just unappreciative, insecure. Uh, she treats me basically like a roommate instead of her treating me like a wife. She treat her husband, and I'm just sick of it. And you're tired. Yes. You're done? Honor. Yes. And I, um, I understand you've come in here with your mind made up. Yes. Are you looking for a divorce or a resolution for change? What are you looking for? Uh, at this point, I mean, I'm, I'm just looking for her to accept me for who I am or I, I just, like I said, I want a divorce or separation. Yes, sir. Ms. O'Karma, you heard what your husband said. What do you say? I'm here today to save my marriage. Uh, I love this man. I think we can work it out with marriage counseling. We've been in separate uh, bedrooms for several months now, and it's breaking my heart, and I want us to go to counseling to resolve this. So, you see reconciliation as a possibility, but you do know that counseling is necessary in order to get over whatever these issues are. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so correct. let's see where we end up shaking out. Mr. Smith... You have come to court and you say that your wife is not treating you as a husband. Yes, Your Honor. Why don't you break it down? I mean, it's just like, I, I like to gamble, Your Honor, you know. I mean, like I, gamble meaning addiction gamble or gamble like having a good time gamble? I mean, I like to play the Georgia Lottery. Um, I like to bet online on the sports, football, basketball, baseball. I enjoy those things. I work hard for my money. Does it impact on the finances in your family? I pay half of my... I pay half of the bills, she pay the other half. But she's so controlling, she wants to take all of the money and just do what she wants. Like, I, it's like a base, like I'm a kid. I have to check in, oh, can I do this, can I do that? And I work... You know, like I said, I work hard for my money, Your Honor. I shouldn't have to go through that with her. So, Ms. Elkarma, I'm coming to you. Um, why is the system not working? Well, uh, very recent, he, um, I'd given him, you know, my half of the rent and obviously he, to pay it and come to find out he did not pay it when we came home one day, there was an eviction notice on the door in our apartment. They and, don't usually evict you after one month. No, actually, you're absolutely correct. It had been at three months and I did not, you know, I didn't realize he was in charge of paying the rent. I gave him my half. And Each was... month you've been giving him your half and yes, you find out at the end of the third month that absolutely. the money had not been going... Absolutely. And at first, he denied it. And then he finally, when I kept on and on probing him, he finally said... Uh, he admitted to it and said that he was trying to do whatever investments to try to, you know, flip it or whatever he did, but it did not work. And he had uh, lost it on gambling. So, Mr. Smith, I turn back to you because it's one thing to have 
a fun hobby that um, your wife disagrees with. It's another thing if that hobby jeopardizes the finances in the family. And if she gave you money to pay a absolute necessary bill, which is the rent, why didn't you do that, sir? Uh, I, I, I was gambling. I was gambling my part of it up and paying other, other things. I did pay, like, the electric bill. I paid the cable bill. Things that she's supposed to give half on that she didn't as well, either. So she's not telling you that. Well, are you both not paying things on time? Help me to understand, because y'all need to make this make sense to me. Right. No, ma'am, I was giving him the complete portion of half of everything. I gave it to him each and every time on the exact time. And he had been paying the rent prior to that. That was the first time he had missed it for the, the last three months when we got the eviction notice. And that was when I realized his gambling had gotten out of control. So do you admit, uh, Mrs. Smith, that the gambling has gotten out of control? I mean, I wouldn't say it's gotten out of control because I work hard for my money. You know, I work every day. I agree, but you know what? I'm gonna quote you what, what one of my favorite comedians says, why folk want credit for stuff they're supposed to do? You gotta get up and go to work every day. It's not like it's an option. They call it work for a reason. Otherwise, they'd call it vacation. That's, that's true. But I should be able to enjoy my money if I'm going to work for it. Who's, who, who wants to work and give all their money away every time they get paid? We're not talking about all the money. We're talking about the portion of the money that you promised. Remember, I didn't marry Miss O'Karma, okay? So I didn't promise her anything. You the one that made the promises. And that's why I asked you early on, both of you, what were your financial agreements? You told me, sir, that the agreement was everybody pay half. And you messed that up, so you have to acknowledge that this is your fault on the gambling issue, not hers. I got her a ring, a wedding ring. When I gave it to her, she looked at it like it wasn't enough. My grandmother used to say, Ann is better than Nan. If somebody work hard enough to give you something, any is better than none. It was very nice, but it was very, very small, and I just told him I just wanted it a little bit bigger. Do you think that, um, that maybe it showed that you were being ungrateful? I always complain, and I don't do wife duties, Your Honor, as well, so... So help me to understand that. Mrs. Smith? Okay, so, Your Honor, there's a story where we were at my aunt's house. Mm hmm And we always have dinners, because we have a very close family. And my aunt served dinner. She said, we can come eat. So I asked her, I said, can you fix me a plate? So she looked at me and said, no, you can fix your own plate. So I told her, I said, well... You know, up until this marriage thing and all that, she was always fixing my plates and everything at my family's house. So I was embarrassed. My family looking at me like, you know, she can't fix you a plate. So, like, I, I just find that very unappreciated. Like, she can't... She's not doing anything. I paid bills a long time by myself before she gave me anything. So, in other words, you held the family down and took care of the household expenses, and then once the... Marriage took place and there were shared expenses. You think that things changed, is that right? Yes, Your Honor. I feel like they did. So, was there anything that had happened in your marriage prior to this issue at your aunt's house that would make her no longer want to cater to you in that way? Yeah. I mean, there's also another situation where I got her a ring, a wedding ring. I saved my money for 18 months. Mm -hmm. When I gave it to her, she looked at it like it wasn't enough. And that, that really hurt my feelings. That made me feel really low as a man. Like, and I, I agree with like you that. on that, because I believe, like my grandmother used to say, Ann is better than Nan. If somebody work hard enough to give you something, any is better than none. You know? I mean, it's a representation of your love. And if, if you're nice enough to want to give you a present, then you should be appreciative enough to accept it. So I turn to you, Ms. O'Karma. Your Honor, yes, I can say that. It was actually very small. I took a shower this morning. I always, always wear it and didn't put it on. It, it was very nice, but it was very, very small, and I just told him I just wanted it a little bit bigger. It didn't have to have carrots and carrots on it, but just a little bit bigger. You know, I wore it every day, and that's really the only piece of jewelry I wear. Do you think that, um, that maybe it showed that you were being ungrateful? I was not ungrateful. Well, I'm, yeah, you and I define ungrateful a little bit differently because I may not always get what I want, but if my man is trying to do something for me, I'm grateful, all right? But acts of service, you know, making sure everything is taken care of at the house, I don't have to worry about my lights going off. 
I don't right. have to worry about the water not turning on when I flip the, the, the faucet. Absolutely. Those are the things that matter to me. Absolutely. I agree with that. So yeah. I'm, I'm just saying for a man who is trying to show you um, some love and affection to purchase a gift, the attitude shouldn't be, eh, I wish it was bigger. Because it, that can be emasculating. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. It can be emasculating, and a man does deserve to feel like a man in his own house. Right. That's just... I think we, we all need to have, like, real conversations about these kinds of things if you want to make your marriage work. And you're the one who said that you wanted to make your marriage work. Mr. Smith is making it very clear. He doesn't feel like he has a wife. He has a mother sometimes, and he has a roommate sometimes. We have a party for my sister right here. She just came, was very disrespectful at my family's house. Miss Smith, will you join your brother at plaintiff's table? But the family didn't approve of the relationship anyway. Why not? Because of the fact we was never invited to the wedding. We didn't even know they was married for months. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. It doesn't seem like you all have any affection towards each other. What's going on with that, sir? I mean, just... Like, like I said, there's a story, Yana, where, like, if I want to go hang out with the guys and we mm -hmm. want to go have some food, some drinks, and just talk about the long week we didn't had or things like that, I mean, it's like, it's like she always wanted me to check in with her. Like, she, oh, you choosing them over me, you doing this, you... You know, it's like it's always a story behind it. And, and it's like, I don't understand it. Like, it runs me away. It's just, it's irritating. So, Ms. O'Karma, you do realize that Mr. Smith is making it very clear. He doesn't feel like he has a wife. He has a mother sometimes, he has a big sister sometimes, and he has a roommate sometimes. But I didn't hear wife in that list of stuff. Mr. Smith, am I summarizing that correctly? I mean, because that's what it seems like. You know, like, this, the, the, you know, like, we have a party for my sister right here, you know, uh, a couple months ago. And she just came, was very disrespectful at my family's house. You know, and this is supposed to be... We're supposed to be celebrating her birthday. She's right here as my witness for that. So, you know what? I am actually very glad that Miss Smith has joined us in the courtroom today. Miss Smith, will you join your brother at plaintiff's table? You are the plaintiff's sister, is that correct? Yes, I am. And the defendant's sister-in-law? Um, yes. And so, tell me... Do you think that these two people belong together? Because you've been a part of their relationship, obviously, as a family member. Well, I'm, I'm gonna say no. I, I mean, I don't think they should be together at all. I, we didn't approve of the... The family didn't approve of the relationship anyway. Why not? Because of the fact we was never invited to the wedding, okay? We... Not only that, we didn't even know they was married for months. But wait a minute. They've been together now for 10 years. Right, but, but when they first got married... We wasn't invited to anything. We didn't even know they were married. We One day I had a, a conversation. One day I had a conversation with my brother on the phone. I was talking to him on the phone. I was like, uh, we go do this. And he was like, well, I got to tell my wife. I said, your wife? What do you mean, your wife? I didn't know you was married. But, Mr. Smith, why wouldn't you all tell your family that you were married? I'm just curious. Well, actually, what we were doing, like, she, she's right about that. We didn't get married until... August of 2019 at the DeKalb Courthouse. This was not too long before the COVID started. You know, COVID got bad, I believe, like, in Georgia, like, in March of 2020. That's exactly right. It was mid-March. Okay. So, we were planning, because we had to save up money to have, like, a big wedding and reception. And it was only three or four months that prior to nobody really knowing. He should have kept her right where she was. She was a hillbilly back then, so she, you should have kept her well, right. Well, that doesn't sound there. very nice, Ms. Smith. This is clear that this relationship has never worked. Mrs. Smith, am I right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's bad blood there, and I, 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 I hate to be in the middle of it, and I feel like I'm trapped in, that, in the middle of, uh, of this bad blood. It's definitely bad blood. Ms. Smith, is there anything that can fix the rift between you and other family members? No. If I was him, I would just go and get rid of her. Period. And you don't see any way for them to find... Love? Th yes. Nah. We heard the story. It ain't no love there. 
nowhere well, around it. I'm not it. married to her, so I'm, well, I'm you more concerned right. than what he says, not not what his sister says. So I appreciate what you have said, um, Ms. Smith, because at least that's one thing that Ms. O'Connor has right at this point. Now it's about what Mr. Smith wants, but I appreciate you giving me a complete oversight from your perspective because it's always important to see what other people see, mm -hmm. to see if... Uh, if you are really looking through the same windows. Thank you very much, Thank you. I appreciate it. <music> Mr. Smith, you came here to court today because you say Ms. O'Karma changed significantly after you got married. You say you don't recognize who she is anymore. You say she's become aggressive, controlling, and unappreciative. And when you walked in the door, you said you wanted to be a formally separated or divorced. Right. That's I what you said. I have the papers said. right here. And Ms. O'Karma, you came to court today because you said you really wanted to save your marriage. You yes, say Mr. Smith has been irresponsible and has not been considerate of your feelings. Despite this, somehow you do believe that you all can make this work. So, I do. Yes, Ms. O'Karma, I'd like to give you a moment to tell your husband why you think this can work. Okay. Because he's standing there with papers in his hand, and unless I miss my guess, he's going to ask me to serve them. So you tell your husband what you want to say. I think it can work. Um, we talked a little bit not too long ago. He said he wouldn't mind trying Gamblers Anonymous. And I think if you were willing to try that, I am willing to continue to try to save. Uh, we've been together 10 years. I think it's worth the saving. I know I can't do I ain't doing gambling anonymous because I don't feel like I need it. I, my main thing is you're too aggressive towards me. You always want things your way. And in the marriage and relationship, you can't have everything your way. If, if he doesn't want to do Gamblers Anonymous, I think he could definitely cut back. Well, this is really, uh, obviously, you know, I don't think that anybody that self-medicates with anything is smart. However, Mr. Smith's a grown man, so I'm gonna go back to you, Mr. Smith. You are holding papers in your hand. Yes, Robert, will you do me a favor and let me see those papers? Because, you know, people walk in here and say that they're ready for a divorce. I'm gonna see how ready they are. Okay, so... This is from the state of Georgia, and they are signed by the plaintiff. I'm gonna hold these in my hand, Mr. Smith. Yes. This is on you. If you ask me to serve them, Mr. Hernandez will do so. That's his job. You tell me if this relationship is worth marriage counseling and whether or not you can cut back on your gambling. I, I think right now I just need to get, to, get, to get them served, to go ahead and serve the papers. You're ready for a formal separation? Yes. Robert, will you please serve the defendant? Ms. O'Karma? You've been served. Ms. O'Karma, at this point, the ball is in your court on whether or not you're going to accept that service for a separation. But Mr. Smith has gotten the ball rolling. If he moves forward, then this is going to be a divorce. And it may not be something that you want, but I think two people deserve to be happy, and I have seen no happiness in this room. It actually just sounds very miserable, and you're both too old to be miserable in the second part of your life. Thank you. you made a good decision. Yeah, it just got yeah. old. I it mean, just got I old. Feel bad, but it got old. I just mm -mm. Want she it won't out for of you it. anyway. Robert, what do you think? Ten years invested in this marriage, and there was no spark. There was, mm -hmm. it was just dull. I didn't get any sense of love or devotion. Right or kindness or anything. I don't even know why they ended up getting married. I mean, he definitely checked out, mm -hmm. you know, since, since he started talking. I don't think when he walked in the door, uh, there was any chance for this marriage to survive. No. He was done. Yeah. So now she knows it. Right.